Hi, this is Will with NDL Coding. Today we're going to do a short video for the beginners out there that are new to Android development and in some cases maybe even new to Java programming. The focus of this video will be the code that goes into adding functionality to buttons, giving several examples of how you can write the code behind a button or groups of buttons. Hopefully this will help to alleviate any confusion you may have resulting from seeing button click handlers written different ways in different tutorials. And please accept my apology in advance because I tend to use the term handler in place of listener and that's not technically correct. We're going to start by creating a new Android application project. We're going to name this buttons. Of course we're going to put in our URL there at the beginning. And I'm going to go ahead and bump our minimum required SDK up to 5.1. Actually, we're going to make this 6.0. And then click Next. And Next. Next. And we're going to create a blank activity application. So we'll click Next. And we'll take the defaults here as well. As you can see, we have our main activity XML file. We're looking at the graphical view of this file. Uh, this is a feature that the SDK gives us. You can also click into the XML view and just see the XML view of the file. As you can tell, we already have one text view on the, uh, on the activity. We're going to go ahead and add a name to that text view by doing Android ID equals at plus ID slash and then the name we want for it. We'll call this txt message. Very original here. We'll sw switch back into the graphical view. This should make it a little bit easier for beginners following along. And we're going to drag a button out to the page. And because this is a relative layout page, we can put the button wherever we want. We'll go ahead and put this one at the bottom, roughly in the middle. And double click on that button and it shows us the XML view for that button. You can see that it's give, been given a default ID of button 01. I like to name my resources with a uh, camel case or mixed case uh, setup. So we're going to name this button BTN clear or button clear. And the idea behind this button is when the user clicks it, it will clear that message out. And as we switch the text to clear, we can switch back to the graphical layout and see that now we have one nice button at the bottom that says clear. So to wire up the click handler for this button, I went ahead and saved that there. We can go into the main activity Java file. I like to make my button variables private variables. So we'll create a private button and we'll call it btn clear. Eclipse recognizes that it doesn't know what a button type is, so we'll go ahead and tell it to import the button um, type into the uh, import section here. So now we've defined a private variable, which happens to be a button called btn clear, and we need to go ahead and tell the program what that represents. And we'll do that by saying button clear equals and we'll cast the result of find view by ID for R which is your resource dot ID dot button clear. And I'm going to do this on separate lines, it makes it a little bit more readable. This section is for setting up controls on our activity. The next section will be for setting up the click handlers for our buttons. And here we'll set the button click handler. Or in the case of Android and Java, the button on click listener. We're going to need to create a new function for the listener. 
So we'll go ahead and say new button dot on click listener. As you can see, Eclipse has highlighted this as an error. So we'll go ahead and hover over and see what the error is. Of course, the error is that we don't have the abstract method for view on click listener. So we're going to go ahead and add that un unimplemented method now. And you can see that it creates this auto generated method stub. And this is where we're going to put our code behind to actually manipulate the text in the text view. But before we can do that, we have to be able to reference our text view. So we'll create another variable called text message. And we'll set that control up here. And now that we have a variable that we can use to reference that, we can simply say txt message dot set text. And we're going to set this text to zero. And maybe when we add more buttons, we can do some simplistic calculator functions. So with that done, I'll format my text, my source a little bit, by deleting some white space out. We'll save this and we will work to run this in a virtual device for testing. We'll start our emulator up. I'm using one of the Intel images because I have uh, the Intel HAXM driver installed. We'll be doing a video on that shortly. Check the description of this video for a link to it. That particular driver greatly improves the responsiveness and speed of the emulator. This one's going to be a little bit slow because I am running it on a uh, virtual machine. So we'll probably speed the video up a little bit at this point and get it loaded. Emulator's up. So we'll go ahead and close the AVD manager and unlock Android. Okay, so we'll click back into our project and we're going to tell it to run this activity. And I previously configured my development environment to run that on my AVD that I have running here. And as you can see, we have our Hello World activity with our clear button at the bottom. If we click this clear button, it should erase the Hello World and put a zero in its place. And there we have it. So we have our one button click listener set up and working. Let's go ahead and add another one. We'll click back into Eclipse. And let's add, say, uh, two buttons. We'll do one there and one there. This first one we'll call button minus and we'll put a minus one in the text and the second one we'll call button plus and we'll put a plus one in the text because it's this is a relative layout it's referencing its alignment based on the other buttons so since we renamed that to button minus We'll have to change it here as well. We'll go ahead and save this XML file. Switch back to the main activity. We're adding two more buttons here. So we'll do a button minus and a button plus. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before in terms of setting up the controls. But we'll do it for the plus and the minus buttons. Now, at this point, we have a couple of choices. We can continue using on click listeners as we did before, but when we do that, our code gets a little bit verbose 
and a little hard to read. So we could code it like this and then do our logic here to add one or subtract one from the number on the message uh, text value. But instead, we're going to try to write just a single click handler for all of our buttons to use. So we can do this by basically setting our listener equal to this function. And send the on click listener equal to this listener that we've created. Of course, we have to tell the software what type of listener this is. So it's a button dot on click listener. And as you can see, that works rather well. But if we're going to set the listener for all of our buttons to the same thing, we have to be able to identify which button is calling the listener or invoking the listener and act accordingly. So to do this, we look at the view object that's passed into the onClick function. So we'll do a switch on the view ID. and compare it to IDs that we already recognize. Our default ID will be when the clear button is clicked. We'll also have a case for the plus button being clicked and the minus button alright so since we're doing some basic calculator function here we'll probably go ahead and declare a variable to hold the number that we're manipulating so we'll call it num set equal to zero and then we need to set that number variable equal to whatever is currently in the text I'm gonna be lazy here because sometimes the text has hello world in it and do a little try catch statement so that we can do our retrieval of the value from the, uh, the text field and if it happens to fail we just ca catch that failure and set it equal to zero. So we'll do num equal to integer parse int from the string of text message dot get text and since it's a char sequence we'll do a two string just for good measure. If we get an exception here we'll just set num back equal to zero which is kind of redundant since we have it set to equal to zero there but it's safe. Alright so when we're clearing this our number is going to be equal to zero when we're adding this, we're going to add 1 to the number. When we're subtracting, we're going to subtract 1 from the number. And then at the end, we're going to set the text of that uh, message to the string value of number. And with that, we have one click listener that handles clicks for all three buttons. So we'll go ahead and run this again and see what it looks like. A quick look back here shows that we didn't get our click handler set for the minus button. 
So we'll go ahead and rectify that now and run our application once again. And as you see the application came back up, we'll go ahead and try our clear button, verify that it zeroes out that message. We'll add one several times and we'll subtract one several times. And as you see, all three of our buttons work flawlessly. We'll switch back here and add one more button just for good measure. This time we're going to add an exit button right beside the clear button. We're going to call this one button exit and set the text to exit. So now with the code we will set up a variable to handle the exit button. We'll go ahead and set up that control. And we'll set the click handler for the exit button as well. Next, we're going to demonstrate a different way of handling on click listeners, because right now we have a listener variable. The last method for on click listeners that we're going to demonstrate will be to have the activity itself implement the on click handler interface. We do that by going to where the activity is defined and simply typing implements on click listener. Eclipse underlines that for us. We'll hover over it. We're going to tell it to import the on click listener for the Android view. And then we're going to hover over the main activity and it's going to tell us it wants to add the unimplemented methods. So we'll go ahead and do that and scroll down to the bottom and you see that we now have an override for on click view. We'll go ahead and cut our code out of our old listener here and paste it into the override on click function for the activity. We'll delete our old listener and instead of having the on click listener reference a listener variable, we'll just tell it to reference the activity itself. We do this by using the term this. We scroll back down, we'll add the code to handle the exit button click. We'll save all and then run it again. And as you can see, we now have our nice exit button at the bottom. So just to make sure everything still works, we'll hit clear. We'll add one several times. We'll subtract one several times. Hit clear again. And finally, exit to exit the application. For information on setting up your own Eclipse development environment for Android development, see the link in the video description for a video we made on setting up Eclipse on Windows 10 using the Android SDK. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe for future videos. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or requests, please leave them in the comment section below.